right guys it is thursday and i'm just now getting back on the 55 uh, actually yesterday all day anyway so i am glad now it's kind of weird to say that but i'm kind of glad i got the solvent pop and had to do this because it ended up being a pretty big mess here uh, with this gas door opening you know as i said it in the other video i had a low spot here and a low spot up in here and this looked like ripples when I blocked the car, I didn't have the gas door on it. So, you know, when you're trying to long block something in an X pattern with a hole, you know, it's especially with a crown, it's going to it's going to sand odd. So, yesterday, I bolted the gas door on, got it all lined, and boy, that's when that turned into a big mess. Uh, I noticed that nothing fit right and uh it just didn't it wasn't blocking even in this area all the way around like this was all low. Probably from the stamping when they stamped this, you know, in the quarter panel when they made them new, it sunk this area in. Uh, so, rookie mistake right there. I should have done that in the beginning. I just didn't want to bolt the gas door on, align it, you know, take it off and grind it and do all that to fit it. So when I gapped the gas door originally, I was just holding the door up here like this with my hand and just marking the area and then going like that. So after you bolt it on... You've got a bigger gap back here after it's bolted on because this folds up inside. It's got to have a little bit thicker gap there. So what that did was it made the front tight. So I ended up having to refile the front of that again uh, to get the gap to look right. So man, this turned into a mess. And then what you know, when I did it all separate, it was basically going to be like panel painting where you just paint a part and you bolt it on. That's what I was going to do with the gas door. Well, I'm glad this worked out because. The gas door didn't even have the right crown at the back back here. Now this lined up here and here and down here, but up here it was out a little bit. So I had to bend a little bit more of a crown in it uh, to get it to match up right. So I ended up using a two-part uh, U-pole putty here. And I basically I had the gas door on. I basically just wiped it all and then went back and blocked it. And this is what stayed. So all this around here was low. So... Uh, I, I'm glad I did it because now, you know, after the car's painted black, it's going to be freaking nice right here instead of having this whole sunk in area. So learn from my mistake. I know a lot of guys already know this, but again, I'm just an amateur in a garage. I mean, I have painted quite a few cars, but I've never tried to make one really, really super nice like this. But if you've got aftermarket quarters like I do on a 55 Chevy, be sure and check your gas door. Uh, while it's in metal or at least bodywork stage because I guarantee you're gonna have to modify it I did have to have to on mine now originally these gas doors, you know, they have a They have a nice little rounded edge all the way around and uh, I think that's gonna mess up the the overall reflection of the black, you know in the finished product So I I basically sanded it straight I'm gonna leave that that sharp edge that 90 degree edge instead of rounding it I'm gonna leave that sharp uh, that way it just looks better in paint more crisp i guess um, i've got a little bit more finish work to do around the edge uh you know i, I had the gas door on when i wiped everything so it kind of you know it had filler down on the inside and i had to take a knife while it was still kind of soft and you know work my way around so it didn't bond itself uh, but after it got sanded there was little bitty edges on the spot so what i did was mixed up more putty and I basically did my fingers like that and dipped my fingers in the putty and did it like that so I got my nice 90 degree fill in. Of course, I have to go back and block this now. But Anyway, so I'm hoping by the end of the day I can have this reprimed again in the gas door as well. And uh, you know, after I sand this, I'm going to bolt the gas door on and primer it on there so it, it's all built together. And then I'll go back and sand it again and then 2K it. And, so it's a big mess, but... Uh, in the end, it just worked out better that I had to do that because that, that's pretty awesome that that now this is not thick at all But you know, that just lets you show right there that that's how low that is so And it's got to be from the stamping In other news, I mocked up my uh, inner fenders inner front fenders and my core support and my radiator and uh, this is all because of the original horns you know, originally, uh, back when I mocked this car up, uh, I've had it put together two or three times, but I originally was going to do uh, an aftermarket smaller horns and mount them underneath the splash apron that goes here. That way they're out of sight, out of mind, 
and uh, you know it didn't clutter this up up here. But uh, as things change, you know, and time goes on, uh, taste change basically. And, and I just got to thinking about, uh, you know, I did the original style air cleaner, original style valve covers. I'm trying to kind of make it look like a 265, and you know, the engine compartment kind of needs to look original to me. So I decided to go ahead and put the factory horns back on. Now these are the original 55 horns. Um, these are actually off a four-door car I had. These are very, very nice, and they still work. So in reality, the car's getting its voice back uh, because these horns, you know, they have a, they have their own sound. And uh, if I'd have put on an aftermarket horn, it'd have sounded like a freaking import car or a boat or something, you know. So anyway, so I decided to put these on. Now the problem that I ran into, originally the horns go up here higher, and I've got my cold air pipe coming in here. So I had to drop them down. Now the bad part about dropping the horns down is the grill. You're going to be able to see them through the grill. Now that don't really bother me because it's just, it's kind of original. You know, a lot of people's not even going to know. So anyway, so after getting the horns put on there and finding where I want them and, and drilled some holes to put bolts in them, after looking on the horns, they're just not that pretty to look at. I mean, they're unique and they're cool looking. You can tell they're old. They're just they they lacked a little in the in the hardware detail department. I really don't like these little balls here that's on here, whatever these are. It's where they're put together basically, but this just looked kind of funny, but it has to have them. Um, I kind of thought about grinding these down flush and then putting some panel bond in between, uh, like seam sealer basically to put it back together. I just don't know yet. I might leave them. But from the factory they have rivets here and uh they just wasn't very pretty to look at, so I ground the heads off the rivets, punched them out, and I put some 12.1032 ARPs. Actually, I'm sorry, 1024 ARPs in there. So, anyway, it kind of dressed it up with a little hardware, because if you've been following my channel, you know I like hardware. Hardware gives detail to things. Uh, of course, 12 points in here. Now, this is where the wire bolts on for your horn right here. There's a little insulator that goes in here. I just don't have it on here. But uh, anyway, so here's a horn after a little bit of modification. So I've done a wire on here and it's just a little piece of wire with a spade on the end of it for mock-up. And uh, anyway, so that'll bolt on there like that. Now originally they go up a little higher and they have uh, the wire coming off that horn is, is pretty noticeable. It goes up to the main harness. So I'm trying to hide as much wiring as I can to make it look a lot cleaner. Uh, so what I did was I drilled a hole in there and I put a little rubber grommet for the wire to go through. So that's all the wire that's going to be exposed. I'll probably do some kind of little black shielding on it, you know, to make it disappear some more. Uh, but I did end up using a, uh, that's a countersink Allen with a trim washer, stainless trim washer for like an uh, interior trim screw. Just kind of unique, but it kind of helps hide the, uh, the connector. Now, I'll put a little heat shrink on there uh, to cover up the silver on the terminal later. But this is not the wire I'm using, this is just a mock-up wire. But anyway, so I ended up drilling another hole in here and putting a, wire, a rubber grommet in there so the wire, when it's bolted up, goes through two rubber grommets, but it's completely pretty much hidden. So then I'll go in behind, and up here you won't see anything. So now these plates here, these are custom. These are not original. Original, they're thin sheet metal with some beads rolled in them for strength. And uh, those things have a million holes in them. Uh, so I made mine out of thicker steel because I wanted them smooth. You know, the thicker the steel, the less rattle vibration flexibility. Uh, anyway, I went ahead and rounded the edge here just to make it look a little cleaner instead of just being straight. Also extended the ends because they're just straight here from the factory. And when the splash apron bolts in here, there's a pocket so you can kind of see down in there. So this kind of keeps you from seeing way down in there. So it just looks a little bit more finished. But uh, anyway, come around here to the back. So the wire for the horn, you can't see it from my washer jar, but it's going to come out and it needs to go up you know, up in here, up to under here. Now I have welded bolts up under here that loom clamps are going to bolt to with nylock nuts, nylon lock nuts, and it'll hold the harness up underneath there out of sight. 
Uh, I did drill a hole with a step bit up inside here to pass through this part and this part. So the wiring harness goes through here and will be on the back side of the inner fender. So this is all hidden. So in order to keep a wire from going straight down that you would see all the way down to where the horns are, I got some square tubing. This is just a scrap piece, but I bought another piece a while ago at Lowe's. So it's new and longer. You know, I'm going to go to cut a piece of it and I'm going to weld it uh, up in here uh, from the top uh, down to about here. So it's going to be, I don't know, 10 or 12 inch section, maybe 10 to 11, I don't know. Anyway, the wire will go through that. And there's also room for more wiring if I have to add anything else on later. So just mocked it up basically to, to do the horn wires. I mean, that's, that's pretty insane. But I want it clean, so that's pretty much what I had to do. But... I was bolting this stuff on to make sure I didn't have any clearance issues with that tubing, and I do not. So, this is probably the first uh, you've seen on video of this stuff. This is my cold air pipe I made out of muffler pipe uh, with the K&N logo embossed in it. Um, I built a bracket where it bolts onto the inner fender. I have square nuts welded to the back side of the inner fender, so I can just put the bolts in and be done with it, basically. And this is an original washer jar for the windshield washer. And uh, there's a lot of custom stuff done just for this. Uh, but I wanted, you know, throughout the car, it's got quite a few little options on the car that I've, you know, repurposed or modified uh, to make work. Uh, originally, these had a pretty goofy looking motor mounted to the top of them. Uh, so I ended up doing a universal windshield washer motor that goes on to two studs I've got under here. So it's hidden up under here. It's a really small thing. And then it'll basically, um, it'll be, uh, I've got the parts that go on here, but this is the siphon part here with a tube that'll go down in there, but that hose will come out and go to that. And then this is the little slide top piece that you actually add fluid into. But Anyway, I custom built a bracket and I welded studs to it so the nuts are on the back side. You can't see the hardware for that, so it's all clean. And this is actually a piece of sheet metal panel bonded to the original jar lid because originally it had all different mountings for other stuff. And they're really thin and flexible, so I wanted to stiffen it up quite a bit. Uh, I've also changed the hardware for the plastic siphon tube and the little rivet. You know, these are riveted from the factory uh, to little stainless button head Allen's. Uh, with nylon lock nuts, so those will be all polished and put in there. Just detail, you know, hardware is a detail for me. Uh, and uh, back on these uh, plates here, these baffles they're called, uh, you know, I made them. So I cut the flange off the originals and I drilled holes and I plug welded them on to these. Then the other thing from the factory, when these are put together, they have these really gnarly coarse thread bolts and they go in from the back side. So you get these coarse thread the gnarly things hanging out here. So I welded square nuts to the back side of the inner fenders and now the bolts go in this way. Now these bolts I'm just using for mock-up, but I'll have 12-point ARPs and all of that. So that is just going to look clean as can be. And uh, I built my own fan shroud and uh, it's for an electric fan. It's pretty much the same setup. This is a different shroud, but I had a shroud that looked pretty much the same. This one just looks a little cleaner. And it takes a uh, electric fan. This is like a 2400 CFM or something. I had this set up on a 56 Bel Air and it worked just fine. And actually the radiator I had, this one has one extra row of cooling, uh, extra row of core in there. So uh, that's even better. And I have a uh, uh, the sensor that you bolt in the intake to make the fan come on and off automatically. So I don't have to have a switch or anything. But anyway, uh, basically I had to mock all this up just to do uh, the tubing for the, to hide the wires and mount the horns. So I like details and, you know, to, to make sure everything works good, I wanted to mock it up first before I finish out the bodywork and, you know, start primer and stuff. But some of these items, I want to go ahead and get them ready so when I primer the quarter panel, I can primer these at the same time. But I would have gotten a lot more done sooner on the car, but... I've had big fiascos around here. I had to change the deck on my lawnmower. Uh, it was completely rusted out. The spindle bearings went out, so I ended up putting a whole other deck on, and then the belt didn't fit, and I went down and got a different belt, and then it didn't fit. I had to go get another belt. It was a big mess, like two days on my lawnmower. And then this little jewel right here is the fan motor 
for my outside air conditioning unit on the house. It's out. So I ended up breaking the fan, knocking the little lug off of it or whatever you want to call it. I couldn't get it off my old motor, and when I finally got it to move, it actually busted it. So I ended up having to buy a new fan off eBay because you can't even find the one with the correct pitch and measurements and everything. Luckily, I found one on eBay, and the stupid thing was 106 bucks. So it's pretty uh, unique because I went to a, my local heat and air supply down here and got schooled on that. Um, you've got to have the right pitch. Uh, reverse rotation is a must because uh, it's a radio as originally, you know. If you alter that degree of pitch or anything, it may not may not cool right or, you know, heat up or something. So anyway, I could only find the correct fan on eBay. So anyway, I'm back on the 55. Um, I've went ahead and have extended my uh, quarantine time until next month. Uh, so I've got a couple more weeks and I'm just going to solely work on my 55 and I'm hoping I can get the car painted by then or this back half repainted. And uh, there's lots of other little stuff I want to get, you know, painted and ready also. So anyway, guys, I'm back on it. Just if I don't have any more stupid crap come up between now and then, I'll, I'll be good.